Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dr. Pallavi Bajpai from Dr. D.Y. Patil Medical College and Research Center, Pimpri, Pune. The topic today is Histology of Bone. Histology means microscopic structure of bone. Understanding the histology of bone will enable us to understand the clinical basis of conditions which you can see here like osteosarcoma, osteo porosis, osteochondroma and other such conditions which affect patients. I will be covering my lecture under the following headings, introduction, function, parts, components, we will talk about the cells, then we will talk about the classification of bone, I will be telling in detail the structure of compact bone and spongy bone. Then we a word about the formation of bone and ending up with clinical anatomy. What is bone? What is the definition of bone? Bone is a specialized connective tissue with a solid extracellular matrix which is mineralized and adapted for giving strength, support and helping in weight transmission. What are the functions of bone? If we understand the functions of bone, we are also able to understand the structure of bone. It is an organ for locomotion. It helps to support and protect internal organs. It is a site for storage of calcium and phosphate and hence it regulates blood calcium levels. Bone marrow which is present in the bones is the site for development of blood cells. And lastly bones can also be used for bone transplant. Now this is more of a use than a function. Now let us first study what are the parts of a bone. Now this is a diagram of a bone. This is the upper end which is called as an epiphysis, this is the lower end which is also called as an epiphysis and this is the diaphysis or the shaft of the bone. This is showing a cut section and details of the outer part which is the thick part and the inner part then details of the end of the bone. So now when we look at a longitudinal section of the bone, the outer part of the shaft which is called cortex, this portion is very hard, dense and compact. So it is called as compact bone. The inner portion, this inner marrow cavity, it is called as medulla. It shows a meshwork of tiny bony rods and plates with lot of spaces in between. And this type of bone is called as spongy bone. So basically the outer compact part and the inner spongy part. Now we have the end of the bone. When we look at the end of the bone that also shows spongy type of bone. Now the outer surface of the shaft it is covered by a thin membrane called as periosteum. You can see here periosteum and the marrow cavity inside, the walls of this marrow cavity are also lined by a thin membrane called as endosteum. A word about periosteum, it is the outermost membranous covering of the bone. The ends of bones which are taking part in the formation of joints, they are devoid of periosteum. Also sesamoid bones, they also do not contain periosteum. 
Now, periosteum has two layers, an outer layer and an inner layer. The outer layer is fibrous and is made up of collagen fibers. The inner layer is a cellular layer, it is also called as osteogenic layer. It contains various cells like osteoprogenitor cells and osteoblasts. We will be talking in detail about these cells little later. Periosteum has a rich supply of blood vessels called as periosteal vessels. What is the function of periosteum? The periosteum supplies blood to the outer one third of the cortex of bone through these periosteal vessels. Periosteum is responsible for bone formation. Periosteum allows attachment of muscles, tendons and ligaments to the bone. Special mention about Sharpie's fibers or perforating fibers of tendons. These fibers they pass through the periosteum and then attach to the bone. Periosteum also forms a limiting layer for the bony tissue. It is important to understand because if this layer is torn or disrupted then the bony tissue literally spills out or grows out leading to bony outgrowths. Now we come to components of bone. Bone is made up of cells and matrix. Cells, there are four types of cells, osteoprogenitor, osteoblasts, osteocytes and osteoclasts. Matrix is made up of organic matter and inorganic matter. The organic part consists of fibers and ground substances. Now, we will talk about each of them in detail. First, we will talk about cells. There are four types of cells, osteoprogenitor, osteoblasts, osteocytes and osteoclasts. Osteoprogenitor cells, they are pluripotent stem cells, they are mesenchymal in origin and in adults in the periosteum they are found in the deepest layer. They are also found in end osteum. Their function is osteogenic that is they give rise to osteoblasts whenever there is a need for bone formation. Now osteoblasts, they are derived from osteoprogenitor cells, they line the growing surfaces of bone. They are roughly cuboidal in shape, their nucleus is eccentric and ovoid. The cytoplasm is deeply basophilic in color because of the abundant rough endoplasmic reticulum present. Electron microscopic features reveal it is a typical protein secreting cell with a large number of Golgi complexes. Its function, it forms bone tissue that is synthesis and secretion of osteoid or organic matter of matrix that is collagen fibers and ground substance. Next we have the osteocyte. It is the mature cell of bone. They are formed from osteoblasts. They are slightly smaller in size. They are less basophilic, but they are the main cell type which is found in bone, osteocytes. They are oval in shape in the long axis. They have a prominent nucleus. These cells are found in a space called lacuna. Literally, they are trapped in a space in the matrix and that space is called lacuna. 
they have cytoplasmic processes which are coming out from the main cell and these cytoplasmic processes are present in an area called canaliculi. Their function is to maintain bone tissue. Next we have the osteoclasts. The osteoclasts they are bone removing cells. They are very large. Their size ranges from 200 to 100 microns. They are large oval cells with multiple nuclei almost 15 to 20 or even more. They have one border which is very irregular and it is called as ruffled border. They are present where active reabsorption or bone remodeling or repair is happening. These cells are found in pits called resorption bays and the name is lacuna of hardship. What is their function? Their function is resorption of bone or destruction of the bone matrix. So, these are osteoclasts. Now, we come to the inorganic part. It constitutes two-third of the bone matrix or 65 percent of dry bone weight. It is made up of ions and salts. We have the ions calcium, phosphate, magnesium, carbonate, hydroxyl, chloride, fluoride, citrate, sodium and potassium. These are all found in bone. Then we have the salts, salts which are hydroxyapatite, calcium phosphate and calcium hydroxide. Now we come to the organic component. It is one third of the bone matrix or 35 percent of dry bone weight. It is made up of ground substance and fibers. The ground substance helps to bind the calcium ions that is responsible for mineralization of bone. What does the ground substance contain? or what is the ground substance made up of? It is made up of glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, glycoproteins, chondroitin sulphate, phospholipids, phosphoproteins and water. What are the fibers in bone? <coughs> fibers present in bone are collagen type 1. They are arranged in parallel layers and they are synthesized by osteoblasts. So, here we must remember one term and we should be familiar with it, osteoid. What is osteoid? Osteoid is ground substance and collagen fibers minus minerals. Now, we come to classification of bone. We can classify bone according to histology, we can classify bone according to its development and also based on its maturity. Histologically bone is classified as compact bone or spongy bone. Spongy bone is also called as cancellous bone or trabecular bone. Developmentally the bone can be classified into membranous and cartilaginous type. And based on maturity, bone is called as non-lamellar bone or woven bone or immature bone. And the second type based on maturity is lamellar bone or mature bone. Now, with these classifications in mind, we proceed to learning first about lamellar bone. Adult bone is made up of layers called lamellae. Thus, adult bone is lamellar bone. What is a lamella? A lamella is a thin plate of bone made up of ground substance with collagen fibers in it and mineral salts. Between each layer, there are some spaces. These are flat spaces called lacuna. 
or lacunae and each lacuna contains one osteocyte. Now, if you look at this diagram, you can see this thin layer, this is one lamella and subsequent lamellae on each other that is what is found in bone and between each lamellae you will see some spaces, these spaces are called lacunae and trapped within these lacunae are the osteocytes. So, now if we look at an enlarged view of the same diagram, these are the lamellae 1, 2, 3 like this and we have spaces between lamellae, you can see this space, this is a lacuna and trapped within a lacuna is a cell and the cell is the osteocyte. Very clearly we can see passing outwards from the osteocyte are thin processes called as cytoplasmic processes and these processes are present within spaces called as canaliculi. So, we have a lacuna with canaliculi and inside it we have the osteocyte with cytoplasmic processes. So, spreading out from each lacuna are fine canaliculi that communicate with canaliculi from other lacunae. Inside the canaliculi are fine cytoplasmic processes of osteocytes. The collagen fibers in one lamella run parallel to each other, but in adjoining lamella they may be in different directions. Now we come to the second type that is woven bone. It is the first formed bone in prenatal life. It does not have a clear lamellar structure. It contains ground substance, collagen fibers, cells, minerals. But the collagen fibers are in different directions in one lamella itself and they are interlacing with each other. Hence it is called as woven bone. So, we have to remember this that prenatal bone, woven bone. <coughs> it is a very mechanically weak bone and at a later date it is replaced by lamellar bone. Now, in adulthood we get woven bone only in certain conditions. When there is repair and remodeling of bone taking place or if there is a bone tumor. Now, we come to the next variety that is the spongy bone or the cancellous bone. Spongy bone is made up of a meshwork of bony plates and rods called trabeculae. The trabeculae they are branching, anastomosing, curved. They also have lamellae with lacunae containing osteocytes. But enclosed within the trabeculae are very large spaces and these are filled with hemopoietic tissue or bone marrow. These trabeculae are covered by end osteum which contains osteoprogenitor cells, osteoblasts and osteoclasts. The important is there are no Haversian systems. What are Haversian systems? We will come to it just in a moment when we learn about compact bone. This is a diagrammatic representation of spongy bone. We can see on the outside periosteum, periosteum which is made up of two layers, an outer fibrous and inner cellular layer. We can appreciate trabeculae, these are all trabeculae, you can see anastomosing curved, then within the trabeculae we can find lamellae. Also, we can find small spaces lacunae containing osteocytes. Then between the trabeculae are large spaces, these are the large spaces, they contain hemopoietic tissue. This is an actual slide showing spongy bone. We can see the trabeculae here and here and in the trabeculae we can appreciate some lamellae, we can appreciate the spaces called lacunae with osteocytes. Now, we come to the next type of bone, compact bone. 
compact bone consists of layers called lamellae which are made up of collagen fibers embedded in ground substance which is mineralized there are three types of lamellae circumferential concentric and interstitial so if we look at this diagram this is the compact part of bone or compact bone and the outer portion we can see periosteum then we can see these lines they represent circumferential lamellae then we can see these circular lines this arrangement they represent concentric lamellae and in between we find some more lines parallel lines they represent interstitial lamellae the circumferential lamellae themselves are of two types outer circumferential and inner circumferential so again we come to the diagram these are outer circumferential lamellae and these are inner circumferential lamellae the outer circumferential lamellae are just inner to the periosteum or on the outer aspect of the outer circumferential lamellae we find the layer periosteum then the inner circumferential lamellae are on the innermost part and inner to that we get the layer end osteum the concentric lamellae are in this circular fashion encircling a central area called the haversian canal the interstitial lamellae are the lamellae found between these areas these are called as haversian systems or osteons so interstitial lamellae are seen between osteons now what is a haversian system we'll talk about it just now between adjoining lamellae as we have learnt before there are spaces called lacunae with radiating canaliculi inside the lacunae are the osteocytes and inside the radiating canaliculi we have protoplasmic processes of the osteocytes what is important to remember is these protoplasmic processes they make gap junctions with processes of other osteocytes allowing for exchange of nutrients so here in the diagram you can see this is one osteocyte within a lacuna this is another osteocyte in another lacuna and you can see these radiating canaliculi and you can see the protoplasmic processes passing and making contact with each other the structural and functional unit of compact bone is an osteon or a haversian system now what is a haversian system a haversian system in the center has a canal called as a central haversian canal this canal contains blood vessels and nerve fibers and surrounding this canal we have the concentric lamellae and between the lamellae there are lacunae with canaliculi and those lacunae contain osteocytes so this is what is a haversian system it is an osteon with a central haversian canal and around it concentric lamellae now an additional feature here we see called wokeman's canal what is a wokeman's canal it is a canal which connects one haversian canal to another haversian canal that means it connects one osteon to another osteon through which pass blood vessels and nerves we also have another feature called cement lines cement lines are the outermost line or the outermost part of an osteon which consists of only inorganic matter and no collagen fibers so now we look at this diagrammatic representation this is an osteon this is also an osteon this is a transverse drawing or a transverse section view and this is a longitudinal section view so we'll start with the center you can see in the center there is a space or a canal this is the haversian canal so this is one osteon 
this is one Haversian canal, this is another osteon, this is also a Haversian canal and this is again osteon and this is a Haversian canal. So, we all should be able to identify the Haversian canal. Then we can see within the Haversian canal blood vessels, we can see blood vessel passing within the Haversian canal. Lining the Haversian canal is end ostium. Then outside the Haversian canal we can see these concentric layers, these concentric layers they are the lamellae. So, we can see concentrically arranged around it are the concentric lamellae. Within the lamellae these are the spaces, these are the lacunae and from the lacunae we can see radiating canaliculi. So, this is the feature of one osteon. Now, connecting one osteon to another osteon are these horizontal or slanting canals, these are called Wokeman's canals. So, you can see the Wokeman canals connecting the various osteons. And outermost we can see periosteum with its two layers, outer fibrous layer, inner cellular layer. So, this is a view showing a longitudinal section of a compact bone, this is a longitudinal view of an osteon and this is a transverse view of an osteon. What is a ground section? Now, why must we know this term ground section? Because when we learn histology, when we see the slides of bone, we see a ground section of bone. So, a ground section, how do we do a ground section? What is a ground section? It is a technique by which a thin section of a hard tissue like a bone or tooth is made. That means, we are taking a section. The section is prepared without using any chemicals. Therefore, the normal architecture of the bone or tooth is retained. It is done by grinding the small bone chip with a rough carborundum stone until the thickness of the section is only 0.25 millimeters. Then the section is cleaned, dried, mounted on a slide using DPX medium and then we can view it under a microscope. To remember is that in the ground section the cells are lost during grinding that means we cannot see the osteocytes but we can see the lacunae and the canaliculi. So, now we are looking at a ground section. This is an actual slide of a bone prepared by ground section. It is in low power and we are seeing a TS or a transverse section. Now, it appears like this, the dark areas and light brownish yellowish areas. We can see the small circular areas, these are Haversian canals, you can appreciate them here, 1, 2, three and so many. So, these are all Haversian canals. Surrounding the Haversian canal, you can see these concentric layers, they are the concentric lamellae. Then between them, we can appreciate vertical lines, these are also the vertical lamellae or these are the lamellae of the osteons. So, this is one osteon. Now, you can see a horizontal space passing through from one osteon to another osteon that is the Wokeman's canal. The same section, ground section, transverse section of bone under high power. Now, the features become even more clearer. We are able to immediately appreciate the central Haversian canals here. We can appreciate even the small spaces called the lacunae. We can also see the Wokeman's canal. We can see the Wokeman's canal connecting two Haversian systems or two osteons. This is another slide of the compact bone. Here we can make out one Haversian system, one Haversian canal. We can make out interstitial lamellae. We can make out periosteum on the outside. Now, 
what is to be remembered is inner ground section the architecture of the bone is maintained but the cellular details are lost we are now seeing a slide of compact bone ground section longitudinal section these vertical channels that we are seeing they are the haversian canals and around the haversian canals we can see the lamellae so this is one osteon and this is a vertical section of the osteon this is one haversian canal this is another haversian canal and connecting them are wokeman's canals so this is longitudinal section compact bone ground section now a word about formation of bone all bones are mesodermal in origin they are formed by the process of ossification there are two types of ossification endochondral ossification and intramembranous ossification endochondral means bones are formed in cartilage and intramembranous means bones are formed in membrane so now after having learned the details of histology of bone now we can appreciate some conditions of bone the first one is osteochondroma it is a exophytic tumor meaning it's a tumor which grows out grows out so it's exophytic but it is a benign that means it is not a harmful tumor and it is found near the growing ends of bones then we have the condition osteoporosis as you can see here the bone density is reduced this happens because there is decreased in the inorganic content of bone therefore bones are brittle and liable to getting broken then we have the condition called osteosarcoma it is a malignant tumor of the bone then another condition called giant cell tumor of the bone and a condition called paget's disease in paget's disease there is excessive amount of bone remodeling the bone which is formed is non lamellar therefore it is weak and such bones are prone to frequent fractures and when we say the word fracture it means break of bone and frequently we find bony deformities so with that i end my topic thank you